Paradox from this channel on the Professor Herschel. He will tell us how to write a visual method to practice. ECNU NYU Center for organizing such a great workshop. Uh, today I will talk about the fragmentation methods we have been working on for several years. Our goal is to apply ambidextral quantum chemistry methods to really large systems using this uh, systematic fragmentation method. Here is the outline of my talk. First, I will give a brief introduction of this uh, fragmentation method. Then I will talk about this electrostatically embedded generalized molecular fractionation with conjugate cap method for protein energy calculation. Second, I will I talk about this automated fragmentation QMMM method for NMR chemical shift prediction. Next, if I have time, I will uh, discuss this binary interaction method for molecular crystals so we can apply a uh, fragmentation method for periodic systems as well. Finally, I will summarize and uh, discuss some of the future work. Uh, so this list shows the popular initial methods nowadays. Uh, as we know, the CCSD printer system is regarded as the golden standard method. And, however, the scale is pretty uh, large. Uh, right now, we can only carry out uh, a CCSD printer system on 20 atoms. Once the uh, CPU time gets 100 faster because of the poor scaling, we can only solve 20 to 40 atoms. So. Nowadays, uh, one of the hot research areas is how can we extend the power of quantum chemistry to really large systems? In other words, if can we make it a linear scale? So here are the list of the popular fragmentation methods. Um, and uh, recently, Mark Gordon has a review paper on to describe all these fragmentation methods. Uh, in this talk, I will not go through all the details. I think a lot of people in this audience has worked on this uh, fragmentation fragmentation methods like Charlie, uh, uh, Xin, Professor Xin Xu, and uh, uh, also Zhong Hua Li. Uh, so in this talk, I will discuss these methods. We, we are working on this uh, molecular fractionation with conjugate caps and uh, other these two. So recently, we have two accounts papers to uh, review these uh, methods. So first, if we look at this EEGMSCC method, what we do is we chop the whole system into subsystems. Then we use the molecular cap to describe the local chemical environment. But if we sum them up, we will have these overlap uh, fragments. What do we do, as proposed by John, uh, we deduct these overlap uh, fragments. However, we're still missing some interactions, such as the, range, uh, the interaction between fragment A and the fragment E and the F and the G, so on. So if we look at globular <coughs> proteins, there are some radius which are non neighboring but they have a close impact. Uh, so what we do is we take the two-body interactions and add it to the previous uh, monomer energy. Here is a graphic representation of this M MFCC. I think John has shown this uh, quite often. So what we do is we take two radius which are in close contact and add the three-body interaction to the previous MFCC energy. And also, we also use this uh, electrostatic embedding. So here, uh, for this part, we use uh, this MFCC expression. Uh, and also, when we calculate this monomer energy, we always use uh, 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 point charges to represent the environmental effect. And also, for this two-body interaction, we also use this electrostatic embedding and uh, calculate this two-body interaction energy term. Uh, but we also uh, need, have to realize that when we calculate the fragment, one fragment and we take one distance fragment using background charges, uh, on, the, on the other hand, when we calculate another fragment here, we use this fragment using background charges. So we take these uh, distant Coulomb interaction double counting. So we have to deduct the double counting term uh, calculated in these two terms. So this is the final expression for this EGMCC method. Actually, this is, uh, method is uh, very uh, effective. It's, uh, not, it's not very rational, but uh, very effective. And also, we can go over to 
uh, like three body or four body interaction energies as Charlie mentioned yesterday. Um, so this is three body interaction, but as we, uh, in our test, we usually find that this three body and higher body interaction is very small. Uh, the reason is what, uh, we, when we calculate this fragment, H, fragment energy, we always using the electro, electrostatic embedding. So higher order electrostatic interactions are already implicitly included in the fragment calculations. So that's why we can see that the higher order interactions are pretty small. So we test this method on uh, some large systems. We can see the range is from uh, 500 atoms to one, over 1,000 atoms. And this is the number of basis functions. What we see here, this is the error of EGMCC with respect to the full system calculation. The, the unit is in kickoff mode, and uh, all of them are less than uh, one milli Uh Another good feature of this method is that the maximum number in each fragment is really small, like uh, less than 70 atoms. So we can apply not only Hartree Fock, even MP2 or couple cluster theories for uh, these large systems. And also we test the total energy versus the distance threshold. Uh, within the distance threshold, we describe these two body interactions using quantum mechanics. Outside the distance threshold, we use this uh, classical charge-charge interactions. So we can strike a compromise between the attended accuracy and the uh, uh, computational cost. As we can see here, this uh, when the distance threshold is over 4 angstrom, uh, the, the energy gets flat. And uh, the, this black line shows the full system energy. And also, we test uh, this method for using DFT and MP2. Uh, the trend is same. We can see the, the energy is pretty large in atomic units, and the error is uh, a little bit over uh, larger than <coughs> half but it's still pretty good. And also, we can do MP2, and the error is all well below the uh, one, one kick per mole. And also, we can, in principle, we can do couple cluster, but uh, we cannot compare our results with full system because uh, a couple cluster cannot carry out calculations on these systems. And also, we look at these uh, relative energies which, are, which the chemists are more interested in. And also, uh, here, what I want to show is if we don't use the electrostatic embedding, the mean unsigned error for these 19 different conformers is uh, pretty large. It's uh, over 10 kicker mole. But once we use this electrostatic embedding, the error is uh, less than 3 kicker per mole. And also, we can see this uh, CP time comparison between uh, EGMCC and the four system calculations. The four Hashi fork and the MP2, the, this is conventional calculation. Uh, but for uh, <coughs> EGMCC, we can, it can reduce the uh, uh, computational cost uh, significantly and uh, its linear scale. And it can be uh, applied to really large systems with uh, pretty good accuracy. Uh, once we get the energy expression, we can get the atomic gradient. Uh, as we see here, and also we can take the derivative for these background charges. What we do is uh, use the electric field on the atomic charge times the uh, atomic charge, so we can get a pretty good uh, uh, atomic gradient. Then what we do is we organize this uh, beta helping system, which has over 200 atoms, and the RMS D is uh, 0.34 with respect to the X-ray structure. And also we can get this second derivative uh, so if we have ij within the same fragment, we can use this expression to get the uh, second derivative. If the ij is, in, uh, is not in the same fragment, we can use this approximation. And uh, once we get this, we can get a Hessian matrix, the normal coordinates, normal mode, and uh, uh, simulate this IR and Raman spectra for proteins. And we also we can get this, this electron density, depth moment, polarizability, and other molecular properties using this EGMFCC expression and uh, get this IR and Raman uh, intensity from this type of moment and uh, uh, polarizability. So uh, we did uh, some tests on this beta helping system and simulate this IR spectrum and the Raman spectrum. So here this black line shows the full system results and the red line shows the EGMFCC results. We can see that for IR and Raman spectrum, the agreement between EGMCC and the full system is pretty good, not only for the high frequency region, but also for this low frequency region, which represents the essential motion of uh, small proteins. Uh, and also we test on this uh, uh, helical systems, and we get the similar results. The agreement between full system and the EGMCC is pretty good, uh, not only for this uh, uh, frequency 
uh, these vibrational frequencies, but also for the line shape of these uh, spectra. So uh, we can certainly look at some uh, like amide one band in proteins. So in experiment, uh, uh, we can observe a strong peak uh, in this uh, 1640 to 1660 for alpha helical systems. But for beta sheet, there are two uh, feature uh, peaks in these two range. So we performed the uh, M M052X with this basic set to simulate this uh, 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 IR spectrum. And we can see that we can get uh, one strong peak uh, for this alpha helix system. And we can get this uh, two peak pattern for this beta helping system. And so here we use a scale factor to uh, account for this uh, unharmonicity. Uh, and again, I want to emphasize that this, these calculations are carried out in gas phase. So we need to include this solvation uh, effect to uh, better simulate this uh, spectrum. And also, we can apply this method by combining with uh, CPCM models. So in solution, the solute uh, polarizes the uh, dielectric medium and uh, <coughs> uh, creates a reaction field, which can be represented by the surface charges. And so we can solve the surface charges using this uh, formula. And this B matrix is uh, the potential electrostatic potential on the molecular surface. And we can get this uh, electrostatic potential on the molecular surface using this EGMTC uh, method. And uh, we can determine this uh, surface charges self-consistently uh, using this uh, uh, Hamiltonian in solution. Once the uh, wave function is converged, we can get this wave function distortion and this uh, uh, electrostatic interaction between the solute and the solvent uh, using this expression. And finally, we can get this uh, electrostatic solvation energy. And also, we can uh, apply this method to different proteins with uh, different uh, secondary structures. What we see here is uh, the error is uh, is also pretty good, uh, pretty small uh, compared with these four system calculations. They are all below one milli Hartree. And also, we, uh, then we look at uh, this uh, uh, relative solvation energies. Uh, what we do is we take 19 different conformations and calculate these relative energies. And we can see here the, the agreement between four systems and the EGMCC is also very remarkable. So what, what do we do next? So we, we apply this EGMCC CPSM to predict this uh, protein lipid binding affinity using this thermodynamic cycle, which have uh, been uh, discussed by Kenny and uh, uh, Peng Yu yesterday. So I, I will not go through the details here. Uh, so, so the entropy part is uh, pretty difficult to get for large systems. Uh, we are really pushing hard on this, uh, this direction. But first, we just look at this uh, interaction uh, energy between the protein latent in gas space and also the desolvation energy calculated by this uh, CPCM model. So we, we use this uh, scoring function. Uh, we look at the relative uh, uh, protein latent binding affinity. So we assume that the entropy is close when we look at the same target with different inhibitors. So here is a test, test system. Uh, we use this adding with uh, 13 inhibitors. Uh, it has uh, over 2,000 atoms. Uh, then we, dis we did a distortion corrected H4 with CPCM, <coughs> and also we, we are performing DFT calculations. Uh, the initial results shows it's the agreement between experiment and theory is pretty good. It's, uh, the correlation coefficient is uh, 0.9. And uh, uh, as Kenny mentioned, the sampling is really an issue. What we do is we run a classical MD simulation and take 300 snapshots and then calculate the average MMPBSA energy, then take the snap, snapshot which has uh, the closest energy to the average MMPBSA binding energy. Of course, this is not the final solution, but we are trying to do ab initial MD simulation using this EGMCC potential to make it a, a, a better solution. Uh, so first, the uh, uh, first section is about EGMCC. And the next section is about this automated fermentation PMM method, uh, what we do a few years ago uh, with Kenny. Uh, so here, what we do is we have, uh, for instance, we have 1,000 radius. Uh, what we, we are interested in is uh, these local chemical properties. What we do is we take each radius as core region and assign the 
bridges which are in close contact with the core region are buffer region. Then the core region and buffer region are, are treated by quantum mechanics. Then the rest of the systems are treated by uh, classical mechanics. Then if we have 1,000 radios, what we have is 1,000 QMM calculations, and they can perform separately. Once uh, all the calculations are done, we just take the, take the information from the core region. So these are local chemical properties. We just take the information here. Then get, gather all the local chemical properties. Then we can get the uh, spectrum, uh, the, like chemical shift, chemical shift, and isotropic tensors, and J-specific coupling constants from this uh, very simple automatic fragmentation method. And uh, we found out it's very, very effective. So this is a graphical representation. We can just uh, do a script to run it. So this is a benchmark test. We did a lot of tests on small to large systems. And we can see here the correlation between the full system calculation and this AFQMM calculations are quite remarkable. Uh, the correlation coefficient is almost one, and there are no outliers for uh, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. Here, what I want to show is the electrostatic embedding is really the key, as mentioned by a lot of uh, QMM people like Charlie and uh, uh, Inkai. So when we introduce this uh, electrostatic embedding uh, using Amber, this error will be significantly reduced if we don't use uh, 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 electrostatic embedding. And also another test is we use different charge models to see the this RMSC, this is RMSC with respect to the force system calculation. And we can see that the charge model is not very sensitive for this type of calculations. So this is the correlation between the experiment and theory. We can see for this trip page, the correlation is pretty good for, for both of these two calculations. But uh, well, I should remind, remind, remind you that this is done by in gas phase, and uh, the proton amplifier was not included. The reason I will discuss later. Uh, so as we, we know, the most NMR measurements of protein are carried out in the uh, solution phase. So what we do here is we use proton boltzmann equation or other CPSM models. We can solve the surface charges and use the surface charges as a reaction field to polarize the uh, proteins. Uh, so we just use this as embedding field, and we can see a remar remarkable uh, improvement. Like in gas phase, uh, for this part of chemical shift, the correlation is uh, uh, 0.85. Once we include this uh, uh, solvation, the correlation is uh, 0.96. So uh, it's a kind of a very effective way to do this. And also we show this histogram of secondary shift. Uh, so second shift here is uh, chemical shift in the uh, negative structure minus uh, chemical shift in the random coil structure. So we show this distribution of alpha helical and beta sheet chemical shifts for carbon-13. What we see here is the atoms in the alpha helical region, they have an average downfield chemical shift. Uh, but for the atoms in the beta sheet, they have an average upfield chemical shift. And this agrees well with the experiment. And we also, we can use this to differentiate the secondary structures for proteins. And so then, as I mentioned, for this amide proton, uh, some, some of them are on the surface. Uh, so the quantum effect, so they, uh, they, when they are, they are on the surface, they, they sometimes form the uh, hydrogen bonds with uh, water molecules. So the quantum effect between the uh, amide proton and uh, water molecules are very important as uh, discovered by a lot of people like this uh, yeah, charge transfer effect, charge, uh, uh, induction and exchange. So, so the quantum effect between these water molecules and this amide proton should be treated explicitly using quantum mechanics. So here, what I show here is uh, if we use implicit solvent model, the correlation is pretty low as uh, like 0.67. Then once we include this uh, uh, explicit water molecules on the molecular surface. We include the first solvation shell, second solvation shell, and uh, include them using quantum mechanics, and the correlation should will be increased to like 0.84. And also here we use this uh, economic basis uh, as mentioned by Ray Chin yesterday. Uh, and also there are plenty of uh, interesting applications we can do using this FKM. Uh, what do we do? Uh, well, this is one example. So we can validate the protein structure. For instance, this is an NMR structure and this is a uh, decoy uh, structures predicted by Rosetta decoy uh, program. And we can use this NMR score to differentiate this uh, native state uh, X-ray structure and the NMR structure from these uh, decoy structures by direct comparison between experiment and theory. 
and then also we can identify incorrect side chain packing in uh, protein MMR structures. So for this WW domain system, well, we perform an AFPM calculation and we find an obvious outlier in this, uh, for this proton. Then we go back to the system, we can see uh, from the experiment there's a LOE constraint between this uh, atom and this uh, indole ring. Uh, the distance is pretty large. Uh, if you have a such large upfield chemical shift, it, the, the proton must have a, a in aromatic ring in close, in close contact. Then we do a simple model test. We vary the distance and calculate this chemical shift. And the experimental value for this chemical shift is around this range. Uh, so the distance between these two should be about 2.5. <coughs> but in the X-ray, uh, this NMR structure, the distance is as large as uh, 6.8. Then we, uh, based on these uh, initial calculations, we modified this NOE constraint and perform structural refinement using simulated annealing and molecular dynamics using uh, amber force field and also this polarized force field. What we find is uh, uh, after the refinement, the structure, uh, the MSD of uh, ready 6 and uh, this asparagine and uh, this uh, tryptophan gets really close to the X-ray structure, which is as low as uh, Point two, and also we can look at this uh, chemical shift for this proton. They are in line with experimental observation. Then we go back to this structure. We can see that in this NMR structure, this uh, uh, this tryptophan is far away from this uh, this uh, asparagin proton. Uh, after refinement, it's getting close to the X-ray structure. I don't go go over to the these structure details. What I want to show here is uh, if we use empirical models. So this uh, experimental result is 0.6, and the uh, empirical models, they, they show no difference in the structure and X-ray structure, and also for the refined structure. So from using empirical models, you cannot tell which structure is correct, which structure is not. But from AF and AFQM and calculations, uh, we can tell, because the initial calculations is really sensitive to the local chemical environment, and uh, we believe this kind of technology can improve the quality of the structure, uh, protein NMR structures. And also, we can apply this method for this uh, protein lichen binding systems. Uh, for lichen as large as 200 atoms, uh, if we still do QMM calculations, the buffer region should be really large. What we do is we can use a similar divide and conquer approach uh, to, to uh, div div uh, divide these, uh, this uh, lichen into pieces or we can do even on each atom. For each atom, we can have a buffer region. Then we can do it a very, you know, using very efficient uh, uh, fragment. And here, this is a chromophore with a chromophore carrier protein, NCS. And we divide this uh, liquid into three pieces, and we assign different buffer region for each core region, as shown here, using different color. Then we perform this uh, uh, initial calculations, and we find a very good agreement with uh, forces of calculation. And so what we uh, need to look at is uh, the chemical shift perturbation upon protein liquid binding. So uh, here, this is uh, red one is bound structure, the blue one is apple structure. So when the protein is bound to the, is bound to the liquid, they will experience a chemical shift perturbation because the local chemical environment is uh, changed. As we see here, the two atoms in the liquid, uh, they have an aromatic ring close to the uh, hydrogen. So they experience, they experience uh, an upfield chemical shift, and we can see this uh, actually captured very well from the initial calculations, uh, this upfield uh, chemical shift. And also we can also look at the atoms on the protein side, like this atom is on the protein and uh, it forms a hydrogen bond with uh, liquid. It can, so it will cause a downfield chemical shift as uh, uh, so here, and uh, also we can look at some atoms here uh, on the liquid and protein side. We can see uh, up, uh, an upfield chemical shift. Uh, so here we also uh, use this uh, initial NWM score as uh, as a uh, as a method to differentiate the native structures from decoy structures. What we do is we uh, we use we take this X-ray uh, structure here. This is a green one, is the X-ray structure, and other color shows the dark structures. 
and uh, we can use this uh, uh, chemical shift perturbation MST with respect to the experimental value. We can see that the, as the structural MST increases, the chemical shift perturbation MSE increases as well. So we can use this evidential NMR score to uh, guide the protein ligand docking using this uh, method. So, uh, yeah, I'll skip the third part of this, uh, mess, uh, this fermentation method. So what I, I want to present is that we can also apply this fermentation method to periodic systems on this ice or edge. I just, uh, I think I don't have time. So uh, in 1993, uh, Lee and Ross has a, a very nice uh, nature paper. They observed uh, two strong peak in the translational region of this ice one edge and and they find out that they have they also did this uh, sim, uh, theoretical simulation they find out that they have to impose a hypothesis there are two kinds of hydro bound in ice and the ratio of strength is about two to one so this is shows a uh, strong hydro bound and this shows a uh, weak hydro bound so this uh, this picture is uh, still in debate for many years uh, so we we also apply this the binary interaction method. This can be, uh, this is similar to the EGLCC method because there we don't need to do the uh, cut the chemical bound. Actually, we can get the same uh, equation. We also use this uh, electrostatic embedding. I'll, I'll skip this. And uh, we uh, construct a super unit cell consists of uh, 64 water molecules uh, because uh, Atom, uh, the, this, this proton position in has one is disordered. So we performed this harsh fog and then P2 and simulate this uh, spectrum. And uh, I just see the last slide. Uh, so we can simulate the whole range of the spectrum. Uh, of course, the peak is off because the harmonicity is not included. And then we look at these two peaks in the translational region, and uh, these two, uh, we, we see these two peaks. And also, we can see these two peaks in the in the uh, Raman spectrum, and also this this spectrum, uh, this uh, vibration, uh, this band also uh, exists in the IR, and this one is uh, uh, flat. Uh, all these uh, observations agree with uh, the experimental uh, results. Uh, so the when we look at these two peaks, uh, we we can find out that the this band is uh, the uh, the transition type of moment uh, of this uh, vibration is polarized along the uh, lattice C constant. And this uh, this polarization is along the uh, B axis. So we conclude that these two peaks uh, differ from the dire uh, directionality of the vibration of motion. And we expect the experimentalists can prove this uh, our simulation results. So finally, let me summarize my talk. So the EGMCC is uh, able to uh, describe all these uh, protein energies and uh, all the uh, molecular uh, properties. Uh, and uh, this AFQM method is capable of uh, predicting NMR chemical shift. And uh, also this uh, shift and anisotropic tensors and the J coupling, spin spin couplings. Uh, these, uh, uh, these calculations are done uh, by David Case and uh, us. And, uh, also, these two methods are linear scaling uh, with a very small prefactor, and they can be applied to routine initial calculations for proteins of any size. You can do these initial calculations on uh, millions of atoms using these uh, methods. And uh, what we want to do next is uh, to structure refinement and initial and simulation and uh, large scale protein liquid binding predictions, and so on. So, finally, let me thank. Uh, four students who have been working on these uh, fermentation methods. And also I want to thank John Zhang, uh, Kenny Birds, So Karata, and uh, David Case uh, for a lot of uh, helpful discussions. And we will release the AFTM uh, uh, program with the uh, uh, SHIFT program. And hopefully we can uh, use this program to get a lot of things done. And also I want to thank the funding agencies. And uh, thank you for your attention. So my question is, can we calculate the temperature shifts? Do you need to use so, so, the empirical formula to get the actual value, or you just use those? So? 
Do that mean so standard from the calculations? Uh, we, what we calculate is this chemical shift, shielding, chemical shielding. Yeah. Then we take the reference is the PMS and then take the uh, chemical shift of this respect to the... This is uh, actual calculation. It's a uh, DFT or so MMP. Do you not do any additional questions? No. Okay. No. Have you compared with other methods with uh, based on the training or database? Yeah. Um, yeah, I skip one slide because the time limit. Actually, we compare with the different, uh, uh, let me see. Here's uh, one example. So this is, uh, but this is just one example. This, uh, these are calculated from empirical models. So, so this is experimental value, and the, the prediction by using these two empirical models are not good. So for the side chain, it's really uh, a pain in the, in the butt because they don't have enough data sets so, so the, the the prediction is really poor, poor. But for initial uh, calculations, we don't have any uh, restriction. And also, what we think is important, we can generalize this uh, method to uh, protein ligand binding, like uh, membrane proteins and the DNA RNA. And one of my students, Jing Xinxian, is uh, working on this uh, uh, DNA RNA. And also, he showed a lot of uh, interesting results when we include this uh, uh, salvation implicitly, explicitly we can improve the accuracy pretty well. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a... Yeah, yeah, that works. But then for the backbone, actually, as you mentioned, right, the, the admission is not... Um, for some programs, we are, admission is not as good as the empirical models, because they already take the ensemble average into account in this empirical uh, parameterization. But the admission calculation is really sensitive to the local structures as mentioned by uh, a lot of professors. So what we do is what we want to do admission and D and to take the ensemble average and uh, make it. We have done some, but I didn't show here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so you, you show uh, infrared and Brahman spectrum uh -huh. protein in the device. They come from the simulations? No, this is just uh, pure. When, uh, one structure calculation, we optimize the structure. Uh, we just do this uh, normal mode calculation. Normal mode. So, so the the anhydrosine is not included. Yeah, this is still. But uh, the last last this one is uh, we we don't. Ice, for instance, which is periodic structure, because band structure and all that. I mean, it's a phonons. Yeah, the phonons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, uh, uh, there's some. Uh, what we do is uh, we uh, sample the, the phonon density of states. Uh, we uh, use different, the K sampling technique. So we vary the a number of K atoms the sampling this uh, phonon in the in the gamma region. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, they cite our paper. But we need to do a simulation to account for this unharmonicity. That's that's correct. So this is. Yeah, yeah. This is zero temperature. Yeah, this is zero temperature. Yeah. It's a. Uh,